In this video, we'll walk you through a step-by-step -step treatment plan for anyone suffering from Achilles tendonitis. If you stick around to the end of the video, we'll give you a special bonus that puts the treatment program together for you with PDFs and other videos so you have a plan of action to get healthy. I'm Rory Moynihan, and I'm one of the coaches here at Runners Connect. Our goal is to help you train smarter and stay healthy with the research-backed information and training plans. Personally, I'm a 221 marathoner, but I've also specialized in events like the 1500 meters on the track to the longer ultra distances as far as 100 kilometers. We're gonna get into this video by diving deep into why Achilles injuries occur and why they're so hard to treat so you can better understand the why of our treatment plan. What is the Achilles tendon exactly? The Achilles tendon is the thickest and strongest tendon in your body, connecting your calf muscles to the back of your heel. Virtually all of the force generated when you toe off the ground during running is transmitted by the Achilles, and this force can be as much as three times your body weight. The faster you run, the more strain you put on your Achilles tendon. As such, it's prone to injury in many runners, but particularly those who do a lot of speed training, uphill running, or use a forefoot striking style. Achilles tendon injuries account for 5-12% to of all running injuries and occur disproportionately in men. This may be because of the faster absolute speeds men tend to train at or may be due to other biomechanical factors. Achilles tendonitis typically starts off as dull stiffness in the tendon, which gradually goes away as the area gets warmed up. It may get worse with faster running, uphill running, or when wearing spikes or other low-heeled running shoes. If you continue to train on it, the pain in the tendon will be more sharp and you'll feel it more often, eventually impeding your ability to even jog lightly. I know this from firsthand experience. About two-thirds of the Achilles tendonitis cases occur at the midpoint of the tendon, a few inches above the heel. The rest are mostly cases of insertional Achilles tendonitis, which occur within an inch or so of the heel bone. Insertional Achilles tendonitis tends to be more difficult to get rid of, often because of the bursa, a small fluid-filled sac right behind the tendon, can become irritated as well. The causes of Achilles tendonitis all appear to be related to excessive stress being transmitted through the tendon. Weak calf muscles, poor ankle range of motion, and excessive pronation have all been connected with the development of Achilles problems. The upshot is that all of these factors, plus training volume and so on, result in damage to the tendon. While the term tendonitis implies that inflammation is the root cause of the problem, in fact, the true cause is real physical damage to the fibers of the Achilles tendon itself. Much like a bungee cord is made up of tiny strands of rubber aligned together, tendons are comprised of small fiber-like proteins called collagen. Pain in the Achilles tendon is a result of damage to this collagen. Because of this, treatment options should start with ways to address it. For a long time, researchers and doctors muddled about trying to address factors like calf strength and tightness, ankle range of motion, and pronation, assuming that the Achilles tendon would heal itself once these factors were corrected. Unfortunately, it seems that the thick tendons of the body do not heal as rapidly or as completely as we'd like. The cause of this seems to be the collagen fibers. When a tendon is damaged, collagen fibers are ruptured. The body is able to lay down new fibers to replace the damaged ones, but it does so in a rather disorganized way. The new collagen fibers look much like a mess of spaghetti when viewed on a microscope, in contrast to the smooth aligned appearance that healthy tendon fibers have. Unfortunately, it gets worse. While we might propose that runners do calf stretching to loosen up the calf muscles, increase their ankle range of motion, this often does more harm than good, tugging aggressively on the damaged tendon fibers which is much like pulling on either end of a knotted rope. Instead, the main objective in treating Achilles injuries should be healing the damaged tendon itself. The exercise of choice is the eccentric heel drop, which has an impressive research pedigree backing its use. We'll get more into eccentric heel drops, how to do them, and the exact protocol later. While you're addressing the damage to the tendon fibers through eccentric heel drops, there are some steps you can take to help ameliorate some of the other contributing factors to your injury. While calf tightness and ankle range of motion are legitimate concerns, I still don't think that aggressive calf stretching is an ideal solution because of the tugging action on the tendon. Instead, try foam rolling your calves and applying a warm water bag to the muscle, but avoid heating the tendon. Foam rolling your calf muscles can loosen them up without tugging too much on the Achilles tendon itself. Do this two times per day, once in the morning and once in the evening, 
for about three to five minutes. Footwear concerns should also be addressed at this point. If you've been wearing low-heeled minimal shoes, racing flats or spikes, you ought to stick to more traditional shoes with a higher heel until your tendon is healthy again. Once you've healed up, you can gradually do some running in low-heeled shoes or even barefoot on grass to help accustom your Achilles to moving through its full range of motion. Poor casual footwear choices should not be overlooked either, especially for women. Some shoes can also put pressure on the back of your heel, irritating the insertion of the tendon. Generally, the closer a shoe is to looking and feeling like a running shoe, the better it is for your foot. Doctors and podiatrists may be keen to have you try out a custom orthotic to treat your Achilles problems. It could be worth a shot, but there isn't a whole lot of scientific evidence backing their use in this case. Orthotics don't reliably alter pronation, and even if they do, it's uncertain as to whether this will increase or decrease stress on the Achilles. First, let's start with making sure you heat the calf and Achilles area before any running or activity you do, including strength work and foam rolling. This will help ensure that there's blood in the area and the muscles are as loose and pliable as they can be. Next, perform eccentric heel drops or calf raises one to two times a day. If you are running, perform these after your run. Eccentric calf raises are when you start at the top of the movement, for example, on your toes. It should take three to six seconds to fully lower yourself down. We'll do two types of eccentric exercises, straight leg and bent leg. Start with one time, and then if it feels good after a week, move to twice per day, once in the morning and once at night. Start with the straight leg eccentric calf raises and perform two sets of 10 to 12 reps with each foot. There's no need to rest between sets since your Achilles rests while the other is working. Then move to two sets of 10 to 12 repetitions of bent leg eccentric calf raises with the same tempo and instructions. The only change is that you're bending at the knee rather than having a straight leg. It's also a good idea to ice after every run or any time you do eccentric calf raises. If you have time, a contrast bath is even better during the day. Contrast baths involve alternating between hot and cold, which helps speed blood in and out of the area. Because the Achilles suffers from a lack of blood flow and blood is how the body delivers nutrients to help our muscles and tendons heal. Improving blood flow can help heal the injury faster. To contrast bath, take two small buckets or trash cans and fill one with hot water and the other with ice water. It should be cold enough so there's ice on top and it still doesn't melt. Put your whole leg so the water is about up to your calf in the cold water. Hold that for five minutes and then switch to the hot water for another five minutes. You can repeat this two or three times, making sure to end with the cold. It's best to avoid anti-inflammatories like Advil or ibuprofen. These stop the body's natural healing agents and we want as much natural healing to occur as possible. Avoid excessive stretching, only very light, easy stretching until healed. I'll know you want to stretch it all the time. Try to avoid this temptation to stretch because stretching can cause further micro tears in the muscles and tendons, which is not what we want during this time. Massage your calves with a foam roller or the stick. This can help loosen any tight areas and help with blood flow. Heel lifts are a possible temporary solution because they restrict the Achilles range of motion, so they can be helpful to get over the initial hump of the injury, but they should be taken out after you're recovering. Switch to more supportive or more traditional running shoes with higher heels during your runs and while walking around until your pain is completely gone and avoid flats and high heels. If you have time, also try including some ankle strengthening and mobility exercises. You can use therapy bands to strengthen the angle and some active stretching to help loosen them up. Another option is to sleep in a Strasbourg sock or a night splint to gently stretch the Achilles while you're sleeping. A Strasbourg sock or night splint is simply a device you wear at night that keeps your foot in a dorsiflex position, meaning your toes are up and pointed towards your lower leg. This is a way to keep the area very tightly stretched throughout the night. All right, that was a long list, so here's a recap of the treatment protocols. Heat the area before each run or any exercise. Ice after each run or exercise. Contrast bath during the day if you have the time. Use eccentric heel drops. Massage your calves with a foam roller or the stick. Don't take anti-inflammatories like Advil or ibuprofen. Use heel lifts to get over the initial hump of the injury and switch to more supportive or traditional running shoes during your runs and while walking around. We just mentioned sleeping in the Strasbourg sock or a night splint to gently stretch the Achilles while sleeping. You can download the PDF with all this information using the link in the description. Of course, everyone wants to know, when can I return to running? Achilles injuries take anywhere from a few days to eight to 12 weeks to fully heal 
depending on the severity. You can still run during this 12 week period, but only if your Achilles does not flare up while doing so. You should not run if the pain gets worse during or after your run. If this happens, you should take at least five to seven days off and do cross training instead. Also, if you have pain when walking or performing the eccentric exercises, then it's safe to assume you can't run. We like to tell our athletes to wait three to five days after you have no pain walking or doing the exercises before trying a test run. If you have no pain during a run or you find it gets better as you go further, then you can very slowly increase your training volume. Remember, it's better to be patient than overly aggressive. Taking an extra week to build back up your mileage could save you weeks of downtime if you re-injure your Achilles. As someone who's struggled with Achilles issues myself, I can attest this rehab program does work when applied and if you give yourself enough time to heal. I hope this helps you as well and consider forwarding this to a friend that may also need it or by sharing it on your socials or via email. Best of luck runners, happy training.